Thank you for joining us for this North Metro TV Local Decision 2018 Candidate Spotlight. I'm sitting down with Tom Hackbarth, who is running for Minnesota House of Representatives in District 31B, Republican primary race. Uh, Tom, thanks for being here today. And thanks look for forward me. to our conversation. Mm -hmm. I guess uh, just start with, why did you decide to run for this office? Well, I uh, served in this office, uh, this seat, for 20 years. And uh, I ran for re-election uh, two years ago, and I lost in the primary. Uh, I didn't get the endorsement. Uh, a handful of people uh, kind of took me out of the endorsement process, so I thought I would uh, give it a shot in the primary. And uh, not very many people voted in the primary last time, so I thought I'd give it another shot this time. There's going to be a lot more people on the ballot. The governor's race is going to be there, the U.S. Senate race, uh, a number of other offices. So uh, I thought I'd jump in and uh, give it a shot in this primary this year. Well, as you know, as being in it for a long time, politics is not an easy thing to be in. Uh, why did you decide to, why did you want to try, try one more time to uh, get the seat back that you held for a long time? Sure. I, uh, you know, I didn't want to give it up in the first place, and I, and I lost by just a couple of votes, and uh, I thought I'd give it another shot because there were some things that I uh, didn't get done. Uh, uh, there, there's some current events such as the Mille Lacs Lake issue things like that. Uh, I was the chair of the Environment and Natural Resources Committee for a number of years. Uh, I was, uh, the, in my last term, I was uh, the chairman of the Outdoor Recreation and Mining Committee. And uh, there are some things that were left undone, uh, particularly the Mille Lacs Lake issue. And I think maybe with a new governor, uh, we're going to be able to solve that problem. Well, let's talk about some of the issues that are most important to you, the issues that keep you involved and want you, what, <clears throat> what, I mean, you mentioned a couple of them already, but mm -hmm. what are, you know, those top issues to you as you look at uh, state government? Well, uh, the reason I got involved in the first place was my son was uh, very young at the time, and I wanted to see uh, hunting and fishing and outdoor recreation good for generations to come. Mm -hmm. And he was very young, I wanted to see, uh, uh, you know, make things better for him mm -hmm. as time went on. I want to maintain that. Uh, you may have heard lately in the news that uh, fishing licenses are way down mm -hmm. and uh, I think hunting licenses are kind of on the decline as well. We've got to get young people involved in hunting and fishing and outdoor recreation and those kinds of things. And those are the things that I pursue. Uh, that's why I got involved in politics in the first place. I seen this uh, decline coming. I want to make it better for our youth. Okay. What are other issues that um, are, you know, things that keep you involved and, you know, things mm -hmm. that you've worked on over the years or that you'd want to work on if you had the chance to go back to St. Paul? Well, there's uh, taxes are one thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, a few years ago when I was in office, uh, we, we took the uh, 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 military retirement benefits that uh, retired military get. We took uh, that off of the Minnesota state income tax rolls. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would like to do that, and we talked about it at the time, and it was included in the bill, but then taken out, was for senior citizens. Uh, take their Social Security off of Minnesota state income tax. I think that has to happen, and those, that's one goal that I would like to work on when I get back as well. Mm -hmm. What have you been hearing from the district? What, as you, you know, talk to people about mm -hmm. running again, what are things that you've been hearing? What's important to, what do you think is important to the people of 31B? Well, I think the tax issue is one thing that's very important. Um, uh, family farms, things like that. Uh, people are losing their farms. They're operating on such thin profit margins. We can't continue to raise property taxes in particular on uh, family farms. Uh, something has to be done in the re that regard to hold down those taxes. Uh, so taxes are a big important part of this. Uh, business taxes are another problem. Um, we're, we're taxing people out of business. Not only taxing them out of business, but regulating them out of business. Um, I, uh, in the two years that I was off, I uh, took on a client uh, 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 that is very concerned about the uh, restaurant industry and minimum wage and some of those things. Uh, they operate on such thin mo profit margins that uh, a $15 minimum wage uh, is going to put them out of business. Uh, you can't just keep raising their prices of food in order to cover some of these things. With the raising insurance costs and other things, uh, uh, rent insurance, all those kinds of things, um, it's very, very difficult for some of these businesses to survive. And you may have heard, too, that there's been a number of uh, restaurants that have closed in St. Paul uh, just recently, just over the summer. Mm -hmm. uh, and these are some of the reasons why. 
As you, uh, as you look at the growth that continues to creep farther and farther north, mm -hmm. um, what are some of, uh, how, do, as a state legislator, how do you uh, work with the, you know, a lot of 31B is still considered some rural areas, you know, sure. it's, it's becoming more urban and it's becoming more suburban, but how do you, um, how do you work with the people that, you know, and maybe in the south end of the district want more of that growth and the northern end of the district want more of that, more of that country feel? Right, and, and that's exactly the way our district is. There's really no downtown district in mm -hmm. any one of the cities that uh, 31B has. There's no downtown area like St. Francis might have or Anoka, et cetera. Uh, no downtown area. Um, so you're exactly right. Uh, where I live in Oak Grove, they want to keep that more of a rural atmosphere. They want to keep the two and a half acres as a minimum size lot. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, uh, roads and bridges is a very important issue to all of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have to come up with a way in order to get more money for roads and bridges. And uh, I, I'm not saying to raise any taxes, I'm not saying to raise the gas tax, but we were on the right track uh, this last legislative session in dedicating this money from uh, auto parts, for example, dedicating that to uh, uh, building and uh, maintaining roads. And I think that was the right direction to go and we have to come back and work on that again to get that done. Mm -hmm. What is government's role in, uh, in, how do you see government's role in our daily lives? Oh. Um, where, what is, you know, there's, there's this, you know, some will say, I want less government, less government, less government. Others will say, you know, I want these things from government, but I don't, what do you, where do you see government's role in our daily lives? Well, I, I think that uh, at least the constituents in my district and myself think that we have to have a limited government. I don't think government should be involved in our, our lives as much as it is right now. I think that a lot of things are over-regulated, um, but there are basic things that government has to do. And, uh, and that's why we have the government that we do. Uh, Public safety. Uh, I'm a firefighter. I've been a firefighter for the last 35 years with the city of Oak Grove, and I'm continuing to do that, and I'm happy to do that. But firefighting, police protection, public safety in general is something that uh, government has to do for folks. And uh, I think roads and bridges is another thing. We have to maintain our roads and our bridges. Um, I uh, proposed a uh, uh, in a bonding bill before I left the legislature uh, to get some money to build the bridge over in Columbus, over 35, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Highway 2397, where that comes together, that bridge at, by running aces there, mm -hmm. that had to be replaced. And uh, we were working to try to get that money. And uh, my opponent voted against that when he got elected, which is un uh, unfortunate. But uh, government's role is roads and bridges, uh, education. We have to educate our kids, uh, kindergarten through K-12 at least. Um, and that's in our constitution. We have to do that. We have to provide money for that. And uh, public safety, those are things that uh, government has to do. And, and we have to do a good job of that. Okay. What, uh, if you get back to St. Paul, what's the first thing you want to do? What's the first bill you want to introduce? The first thing you want to accomplish? Well, the, a number of things. Uh, and, and it's kind of centered around uh, environment, natural resources, and hunting and fishing and those kinds of things. But the number one thing that I, I would like to do, and I've introduced this a number of different times as I was in the legislature, uh, but because of the makeup of the Senate, the makeup of the House and the governor that we had, et cetera, I would like to see a constitutional amendment for the right to keep and bear arms in the state of Minnesota. We don't have that in our state constitution. We have it in the federal constitution, but not in the state constitution. And this would be very important to stop a lot of these crazy bills where people are trying to take gun rights away from people. It would stop all of that at the state legislature. They wouldn't be doing those kinds of things anymore if we had a constitutional amendment on our state constitution. And I've introduced that legislation in the past to uh, bring that forward and let people vote on it, to put it in our constitution, uh, but we haven't been able to get it done. I think that's something important that we have to work on. That'll be one thing. Uh, another thing would be uh, working on this uh, Mille Lacs Lake issue. Uh, for the last eight years, uh, Governor Dayton has just been uh, kicking the can down the road and not doing anything about the Mille Lacs Lake issue. Um, we can't take a fish out of Mille Lacs Lake and take it home and eat it. And that's just ridiculous, particularly with the population of the lake now. There's more walleyes in, the, in Mille Lacs Lake than there probably ever has been, and big fish, both big walleyes and a lot of fish. And uh, regular anglers, uh, regular everyday folks should be able to take a fish home and uh, eat it if they want to. And I, I think that's wrong and we have to change that and fix that. 
Do uh, um, getting back to your idea of a constitutional amendment, yeah. do other states have oh, yeah. things like that? And yeah. in in that case, I mean, I mean, with the federal second with the Second Amendment in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Constitution is, I guess the question would be, where do you see a need for a state? Um, to have the same thing as the federal constitution that's there for every state. Exactly right, and uh, it's just that we're, they're trying to over-regulate guns in the state of Minnesota with some of these bills that they keep bringing forward to try to get around the, the uh, federal constitution. And you can do that as long as we don't have something in the state constitution. That's why I'm saying if we have something in the state constitution, it'll put a lot of this to rest and they won't be coming forward with these crazy bills. So uh, this has been something that I've talked to uh, the NRA about and other gun rights a uh, associations within the state, and we want to bring that forward and get that passed. And, and I, I think that can be done. Okay. Then with your, uh, with your comments on the issues at Mille Lacs, as you put them, mm -hmm. um, are there, wh what would you propose going forward? I mean, there's been, there has been a lot done, a lot of regulations uh, put on that lake through, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that the, you know, I assume have gone through the DNR and things have done. What, what, who would you work with? What, what do you think is the right path forward there? Well, um, the uh, federal government and, and federal court has made some decisions about uh, who can be uh, netting fish, that sort of thing on the lake. And uh, actually some tribes from uh, Wisconsin are over here probably netting Mille Lacs Lake more than uh, tribes in Minnesota, which is unfortunate. And, uh, but uh, not only do they take a lot of walleyes, but they take a lot of other fish when they're doing this netting. So that has to, we have to work out some kind of a better deal with the tribes from Wisconsin and the tribes of Minnesota in order to make this happen. But I think with a good, strong governor, we can get that done. We, ha we, we haven't really had a good meeting with those folks, and we have to bring them in, talk to them, and work out some kind of compromise in order to, to be able to do this. Uh, um, the uh, Minnesota DNR, this has really been left up to uh, a bureaucracy. Uh, the Minnesota DNR and then the uh, tribes, tribal governments themselves, they've been working on doing this. Uh, Governor Dayton set up a, a group to meet every so often, but it has no, no leverage. It has no power to do anything. They get together and they talk and nothing really comes of it. So uh, uh, I think the governor really has to take the bull by the horns and get this done, get this negotiated, what's gonna actually take place, how are we gonna better manage this lake? This has been uh, too much of a political football and it's uh, gonna destroy the lake. Okay. Well, we just have a couple minutes left, yeah. but I just want to kind of finish up with a couple of more general questions. Just if, if someone comes up to you and says, you know, Tom, why should I vote for you in mm -hmm. the primary? What would you mm -hmm. tell them? Well, I think uh, I've got the experience. I've been the chairman of Environment and Natural Resources Committees a couple of different times. I've been chairman of uh, Mining and Outdoor Recreation. Uh, I've been uh, the chairman of the LCCMR, which is the lottery money, uh, decides how that gets spent. Uh, I've been uh, chairman of the Electrical Energy Task Force, uh, which is another area of interest to me about how our electrical energy works and how we spend that money and how we uh, uh, regulate uh, electricity in the state of Minnesota. So that's another concern of mine. Um, I want to work to uh, take uh, the uh, senior citizen Social Security off of our state income tax rolls. So I think that's an important thing to work on. Uh, so those are some of my goals and those are some of the main reasons that I want to uh, be reelected so I can work on those issues. Hopefully we can get a good governor elected so that uh, we can work on the Mille Lacs issue and get that finally straightened out too. So those are all areas of uh, very important things to me to be working on. If uh, someone is seeing this and wants to get in touch with you, has mm -hmm. more questions throughout this campaign, how can people connect with you? Well, probably my phone is the best or, or, uh, or email. My email is very, very simple. It's ATVHack, so it's A-T-V-H-A-C-K at gmail.com. Okay. Very simple, just uh, send me an email. I look at my email every day and answer all my email. Or you can call me, and my phone number is 612-747. 9275, and uh, that's my cell phone, so you can send me a text too if you like. Okay. Well, thanks for coming in, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, best of luck to you as you move forward. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. Yeah. I want to remind you, you can always head to NorthMetroTV.com for our complete local decision coverage. Everything that we're covering for the primary elections is on there, as well as we'll be getting into the general election later this fall. I want to thank you for watching. I've been your host, Ben Hale. We'll see you next time.